Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hopefully you're all doing well. Hopefully you're getting your projects figured out what direction you want to go. Get some progress made for the upcoming spring and summer. Maybe do some racing. Maybe just enjoy it on the street. Have fun. Whatever you choose to do and how you choose to use your cars, trucks. The important thing is always having fun. So looking at the picture, you possibly know what you're looking at. That is a Bosch 82 mil drive-by-wire throttle body with a Magnus adapter to a Magnus intake manifold and it is on an Evo. It happens to be a 2.3 liter Evo 8 and it's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about some of the things that you can do with drive-by-wire throttle bodies. Obviously these cars did not have those from the factory. They were cable. Um, so this is on a standalone in order to do it. Standalone question is, uh, Haltech Elite. It was a 1500 with an IO expander and NSP software. And so let's get into it. Let's see some of the stuff that I was able to do with this, uh, particular car and we'll, we'll go from there. So opening the software, we're going to come down here. The first thing we're going to see is the boost targets, and this did have a, a rotary uh, boost knob. So we have 1 to 11. We have that many optional targets. I did it versus RPM just because it makes the most sense. Um, if I had wanted to make it taper, um, I could in order to control torque. This particular car, that wasn't really essential, at least not now. But you'll notice the first boost target on that knob is set to 9 PSI, then 12, 15, 18, etc. And it goes to 22. So one thing that's very, very interesting about this car is it has 22 PSI worth of wastegate spring. The lowest it would go at 0% is 22 pounds. So why do I have a target of less than that and how did I do it and why did I do it let's start with the why this particular car is a 10 and a half to one or 10.6 to one compression engine uh, the customer didn't realize initially that he could actually run this on flex fuel and be able to run low boost he did bring it in with the drive-by-wire throttle already on it and so he just figured hey I'm gonna run e85 only but because I had these particular tools to use uh, in my toolbox, per se, I decided to show um, what we can do with it. And the the customer at this point, he's going to bring it back. We're going to do flex fuel so that he can have a high compression motor, still put it on pump gas, and be able to safely boost. And in part, I did this to show him that, hey, that's a possibility. You know, you, you don't have to be stuck on just E85 or some mix. We have options here. So let's get into the how at this point. Now, because it's drive-by-wire, the big thing that we can do is limit the throttle, right? We have our target pressure. We have our base duty cycle. You can see it didn't take hardly any duty cycle to get 37 pounds, 27%, uh, because we have a fairly high spring. Uh, I believe this was a 64-66 car or 62-66 car. Um, it is a 2.3, which I don't like to rev, um, especially because of the crankshaft being used. There's no offset on the journal overlap, so or no overlap, I should say. Um, so I, I try to keep them lower RPM if I can. Now, in order to do this under the drive-by-wire tab, you have to think outside the bun a little bit. You're going to have this pedal to throttle table. That is something that Haltech is going to have in there. Um, you'll have this in an Infinity. You'll have something like this in a Motec, I'm sure. The Infinity only gives you two options and not a lot of user configurability so I did do a custom table because the pedal to throttle doesn't work this way ordinarily it's 
it's uh, a 2D table. So what I did is enabled some axes, and as you can see, I could even have another one if I wanted. Uh, Drive-by-wire, Excel pedal position, APP, and then obviously that has to be a set one. And then I did boost target corrected. So the, the total corrected target after intake air temp, coolant temp, and barometer. And I use that as the other axis. So what it took is limiting throttle. Regardless if I mashed it or not, if I had my boost target set to nine pounds, the maximum throttle position that it would achieve is 22 and a half percent. So what's interesting is it doesn't make the car undrivable because you're not really using as much throttle as you think you are for the most part driving and you go and floor it and it just does what it does. So it took a little bit of fine tuning to get that all sorted. And I'm going to switch to uh, kind of the results and the breakdown, and then we'll look at some of the dyno sheets. So keep in mind, 22-pound wastegate spring. Let's switch to the little notepad here that I made. 16% total throttle was 1.88 PSI peak and made 129 wheel, 130 pound-feet of torque. So real powerhouse. Up here we can see drive-by-wire tuning, name of this particular video. It's an Evo 8, Bosch 82 mil, 2.3, E85. It was a 6466, 22 PSI of spring. These percentage values are TPS, which is why I made that little note there. Now going from 16 to, my note says 19 to 20, so it might have been a little variable, I'm assuming, or I was messing around. I got 6.94 peak, made 212. The 22 and a half was 11.2, and then dropped to eight and made 289. So we can see that this would have needed some fine tuning, but because the percentages are so close, I didn't bother to do that because we're, we're not gonna really use that as a function right now because he's on straight E85. 25%, so again, just went up a little, 2.5%, 13 dropping to basically 10, 324 wheel, and, and you can look as we go here. It's always maintaining a little bit of a drop because the, the throttle plate is being a restriction. But this is where it gets kind of interesting. Four, oops, 40% ended up being 18 PSI even and made 470. So we're starting to get to where the throttle isn't limiting the drive energy produced by the engine. 46 and a half, it came up two pounds, 20.3 even, made 508. 53% didn't really change anything, did make a little bit more power. I apologize for the sniffles, but you know, gotta make videos. Doesn't matter if you're sick or not. So from 53% to 100, which is where we get the 22 PSI wastegate line. It picked up 30 wheel, picked up 17 foot pounds. So we can see most of our correction is really gonna be less than 50% throttle. That's where we're gonna get the most effect for what I'm gonna term torque reduction in this case. Obviously you could use whatever you want. You can say horsepower, you can say torque. We know it's torque in the end, but your power is going to go down because we're limiting the throttle. So now we're going to switch to the DinoJet software and we're going to kind of see what this looks like as we move to the actual Dino results. So let's do that right now. I'm not going to run through all of them, but we'll start with some of the, the first ones. So the 16% throttle ended up making 129 and 129. I think I had written down 130, but obviously that's not quite correct. It made just under two pounds of boost when I, I chopped it, 5,400. And you can see that power band doesn't actually look bad. It just limited the throttle. It, it really did what it was supposed to. That 22 PSI wastegate spring 
doesn't even enter into it because of how we're controlling the boost. Next one up was basically the seven pound. You can see though, it does have a pretty good drop. Drops to 3.8 there, 3.93. We'll say seven pounds to four pounds for sake of keeping it even. Power stays pretty flat. Boost definitely drops. 212 horse. So added added a bunch right right away. Next one up should be oh, it's another one that I just ran out a little higher. I guess an actual even seven pounds. Made a little bit more. We'll jump ahead a little bit. Here's 15.8, 400 wheel, 340 foot pounds. Now it's starting to look like it has a power band. But that 15.82 pounds, and then out here, it's dropping to 13.6. I run that on pump gas, even with 10 and a half to one compression. I wouldn't be afraid to do that. You can still make some power, still have fun. So when we go back to the notes here, 15.8. So that's 30% throttle. But the power band looks decent. Spools at 4,500. Makes 300 foot-pounds there. Makes basically 400 wheel at 6,800. 6,830, I guess it says. So putting it all into application, it would technically allow us to way overspring a combination. Maybe you have a front-wheel drive car. Um, or in this case, you have a high compression engine. I don't particularly care to build those, um, unless it's going to be just, you know, straight E85 or straight methanol. But for a street car where we want to be able to go back and forth, I do prefer a little bit lower. But regardless, it gives you the option. You could build a 10 and a half to one compression motor, or maybe you're going to run a stock K24 or a stock F22, and those are high compression. Ah, well, if you have a standalone, and some creativity, you can take advantage of using the drive-by wire to fix issues um, that ordinarily you couldn't, that would require taking the wastegate off, putting different springs in it, which ultimately will limit how much boost you can run at 100% wastegate duty cycle. But we've been able to, to uh, kind of, you know, get the, the best of both worlds here. We have a potential for a lot of boost and barely using any, any wastegate duty cycle. I'm going to clear these all out. And we're going to see what the car made it in the end. Well, wouldn't you know it, I don't have the, the finals here, but I do have the car at 26 pounds of boost. 618 horse, 464 pounds. Nice, nice big power band. Really starts to wake up at 4,500. And I guess I went all the way to 8,000 and then started chopping the throttle. You can see there it just rolls over. So let's switch back to the Haltech software real fast. And I'm going to show you one of the other things that I like to do with drive by wire, especially cars that have weaker valve springs. At, for the boost level, or depending on how the valve train's put together, in this case with rocker arms, we don't really want an aggressive rev limit. So let's switch back to that real fast, and I'll show you what I was doing there. So now we're back in the Haltech software. If we go under Max TPS, so Boost control target is our axes still, and you'll notice that it's basically identical to our pedal to throttle. And then main RPM limiter, RPM before, this works backwards. So if you look at it this way, 250 RPM before what our rev limiter is set to, it's still 100% throttle. 200 RPM before, it's 80. 150, it's 61. 100, it's 42. And 50 it's 23. So basically we chop it down to where it's going to make that eight or nine pounds at 8,000 RPM. It's probably not even going to do that when we go back and, and look. You can see that the boost is definitely tapering off. We're 15 point some, 
Oh, I guess that's a little inaccurate. Let's let's get it on the end there. Oh, it's doubling up. It's still 25, but you can see that it is closing the throttle. And that's killing the power because now we only have 309 horse. Where just a few RPM before we had 610. So we lost 300 horsepower in 200 RPM. 300 RPM. Drive-by wire can be our friend if we can think of ways to exploit it. It's not necessarily something that is a drag and going to get in the way. Um, it used to be that way. Stock ECUs, standalones that had insufficient ability to monopolize on the power of a drive-by wire throttle body. Um, you know, it, it, it wasn't as cool, but with anything modern, we can really do some, some pretty neat stuff. Um, a lot of stock ECUs will use it for error correction if the car makes more torque than it's supposed to make, i.e. Ford. My Ford Explorer does that. If uh, fuel rail pressure starts to drop, it starts to chop the throttle. Um, a lot of interesting ways to use it as a safety. Not necessarily something that's easy to do in some ECUs. The Haltech, you know, again, have some imagination, spend a little time messing with it, and you can come up with a solution to limit throttle um, and use it as a safety. So anyway, guys, hope everybody's doing good. Talk to you later. Bye.